The Joy of Flying Gliders, Part 2. Question. If the wind stops, do you have to land? Answer. No. That's how kites work, but it's not how gliders work. Gliders work just like the paper airplanes you used to make and fly in math class. They're always coming down. So if you want to keep it up for four, five, or six hours, as some glider pilots do, you have to find a source of rising air. So a more insightful question to ask is, what are the common sources of rising air available to a glider pilot? The answer is that there are three, thermals, ridge lift, and mountain wave. Hot air rises, and a thermal is just a rising column of warmed air. What you're supposed to notice here is the rising column of smoke coming off the candle flame. In the glider situation, the sun warms the ground, the ground heats the air next to it, and the air rises. On a lot of days, the rising air rises far enough to reach the cloud condensation level, and you get the formation of cloud whose bases are all at the same altitude. That's what you can see in the part of the video that we've just yep. been looking at. This is an aerial view of some of those clouds caused by rising thermals. They're called cumulus clouds. With the camera up here, cloud base around 6,000 feet. So here the glider pilot is exploring for lift under the dark base of one of those cumulus clouds. He has a panel instrument that tells him how fast the glider is gaining altitude. It's called a vario, or variometer. In a well-equipped glider, the vario will make an audible sound so the glider pilot can tell just by listening whether he's in rising air or sinking air. Just to make it clear, the glider pilot flies along until his instrument tells him he's in rising air, and then he does whatever he can to stay in it. Usually the right thing to do to stay in it is to circle. The vario is the circular instrument at the top right of the instrument panel, and zero is at center left, so an upward deflection shows uh, rising, Glider saying gaining altitude and uh, downward show that the glider is losing altitude. So here the vario is indicating about seven or eight hundred foot feet per minute up, which is a nice big uh, rate of increase of altitude. So he starts a left hand turn to try to stay in that rising air. As the glider pilot goes round and round, he keeps making small adjustments to a circle to keep it centered on the thermal so he gains the maximum amount of altitude on each circle that he makes. Let's move on to the second source of rising air that's going to help the glider pilot stay up in the air for five hours. It's called ridge lift, and the idea is very simple. It's just wind blowing towards a ridge and going up the side of the ridge. Here's a graphic analog for you. The water is climbing up the rock directly in center, contrary to the popular epigram. Here's a view from a glider flying along in ridge lift. The wind is coming from the left. You can see the shape of the ridge. And down in the valley, there are lots of places to land. And that's a good thing because if you fly in ridge lifts, you may have to land at any moment. Why so? Well, you can see that this pilot is flying along at about 2,600 feet altitude. That's only uh, less than 2,000 feet above the valley floor, so if the wind decides to stop suddenly, it won't, uh, it'll only be a few minutes before he finds himself on the ground. Now the pilot has turned around, so he's going uh, in the opposite direction on the, on the ridge, and the wind is now coming from the right. You can see that he is down uh, closer to the trees. You know that because the trees look bigger. He's down to 2,300 feet, 
about 300 feet over the trees, and he's dawdling along at about 50 knots. You can see that on the airspeed indicator at top left. 50 knots is about 58 miles per hour. He feels safe because if he runs into a sudden blast of sinking air, he will put the nose down to pick up speed and turn to the right and fly into the valley to land in one of those nice looking fields. Here's another ridge flight on another day. The wind is blowing from the right and it's not very strong, it's about 10 miles an hour. So the ridge is not working very well and the pilot has not been able to maintain his altitude. He's been slowing, slowly coming down against his will and now he's low over the trees. To be prepared for any sudden burst of sinking air, he kept his airspeed high. You can see on the airspeed indicator he's going between 70 and 80 knots. 80 knots is about 90 miles an hour. If he runs into that sudden burst of sinking air, he'll give a little back pressure to the stick and zoom up, uh, trading his um, speed for altitude and then fly out over the valley to the right. In fact, this pilot gave up on the ridge lift shortly after uh, this video and turned out into the valley and landed at the airport. So the answer to the question is, if the pilot is flying in ridge lift and the winds stop, indeed he does have to land, uh, frequently in just a minute or two. This pilot hit, picked a nice long field and managed to avoid hitting anything. A third important source of rising air is mountain wave, uh, found uh, in the standing wave downstream of a mountain. This video shows a standing wave in the river downstream of a tall rock, and here's another uh, standing wave where you see three standing waves, one behind the other. The pilot's goal, of course, is to get himself into the upward part of the wave and go up in it as far as it will take him or as far as human physiology and regulations will permit him to go. This glider pilot is flying in wave at about 7,000 feet. The lift is smooth and you can tell by looking at the vario that he's going up at about 200 feet a minute. Uh, it's smooth just like an elevator. So flying in wave can be spectacular and at the same time very peaceful and satisfying. Uh, you have a 360 degree view that you wouldn't believe. Here's wave flying on another day. Flying in mountain wave is uh, usually the glider pilot's only opportunity to fly above the clouds or at least at the same altitude as the clouds. The view is just unbelievable, indescribable. The glider pilot does have to be careful though to stay near the hole in the cloud so that he can get down below safely if the hole starts to close up. If the pilot is flying in mountain wave and the wind stops, does he have to land? Well, yes, but it might take quite a while from 7,000 feet or he may find some thermals on the way back down and stay up that way. 